Hey, what is up everybody? It's Ivan here. And so lately I've been learning a lot of stuff about how we can run neural networks on Android phones using TensorFlow Lite. And so as some of that stuff was clear, some of that stuff actually wasn't. And so I think there might be a room, some, some room of knowledge that I can um, help you guys with, you know, in getting started with TensorFlow Lite and running neural nets there on Android phones and all that good stuff, right? So in the spirit of this series, and we'll see where it's gonna go, right? But in spirit, it's gonna be really similar to the Android Deep Learning with OpenCV series that I've done on my channel before, where we essentially ran neural networks with OpenCV for Java with the DNN module, right? And obviously, as TensorFlow Lite is like the new uh, cool kid on the block, as they say, right? With a lot of awesome features uh, that it offers and with a lot of support from the TensorFlow Lite team and with uh, a lot of amazing things there. Uh, it's super compelling to use and uh, that's what I'm gonna be uh, trying to, you know, uh, do my part in explaining, hopefully, right? So, speaking about the compelling stuff, right? Getting started with TensorFlow Lite on Android devices, devices is actually like, surprisingly easy. Uh, thanks a lot to the examples that they provide, to the uh, various examples that the TensorFlow Lite team provides and uh, many, many apps that we can run or run and like use on our phone essentially, right? And that we can take an example, uh, kind of see how it works and then start build building up like from there. So I find that, that to be really, really cool and appealing. And before we start, you know, before I start my ramble about how do we get started, I, I actually want to mention something, which is that uh, this video is going to have a accompanying uh, report on weights and biases, which is a blog post where I've also wrote uh, pretty much all the steps that I'm going to be covering in this video on how, we, on how do we get start, started with like TensorFlow Lite examples. And if you also enjoy the written word content or if you like want to refer to it at some point, I would appreciate if you checked out this report. I'll leave a link in the description. Uh, took uh, quite a bit of effort to put, put this together. so. Uh, hopefully it's gonna be useful to you. And so uh, let me say kind of a few words about the things that I find compelling with TensorFlow Lite, right? The first thing being is like, is that it's clear that, you know, it's supported and it's new and the whole like spirit of like, you know, you can have a Keras model and there's like literally a couple of lines of code and you can convert your Keras model into a TF Lite model and run it. So uh, there is like a lot of convenience, especially in the, in the like, TensorFlow family of, you know, frameworks there. So that's really cool. And so another thing that I think it's cool is the fact that it's uh, optimized for, you know, for speed and running on devices and all that good stuff, as well as like, it supports quant quantization, which is, you know, when you reduce the size of your models, which is obviously a big, big deal uh, when we're, you know, doing all this stuff on mobile devices uh, as well. And so like another cool thing is that we can, uh, run the models right, like right from the assets. So, we, like for instance, for instance, if our model is uh, small enough, we can just put it in the assets folder and then just load it from there. So we like don't have to like download it from the web. So you know, you can essentially send somebody an APK and that person can run it with like no internet connection. And I think that like those who have followed Android Deep Learning with OpenCV series in my channel can appreciate that because you know you, we weren't able to do that. With, OpenCV actually. So that's really cool. So there's a lot of cool stuff, but again, as I mentioned, uh, the thing that that's super cool is that getting started is like super easy and we got, and we got this example, example apps that can help us get started. So our objective is going to be like to be able to run this example essentially and understand what's going on. So uh, first thing that we got to get ourselves is Android Studio basically, which is where we're going to write code. And, uh, you know, I'll, if, if you don't know about Android Studio or like how it works, it's like essentially the go-to Google's official integrated development environment uh, for writing, writing Android apps. And so that's what we're going to stick to uh, in this video, right? So go get that if you don't have it, it's super easy to get, to get it. So once we have Android Studio, we, get, we have to go and download the examples and the examples are in this github repository you know on the tensorflow github page essentially right 
uh, in the examples repository. So here we got a bunch of examples, and one that, but the ones that we're actually interested in lie in the light folder here. So uh, what I say you do, you can either go and like uh, git clone it, or you can just go and download zip, the whole repository, repository with examples, and uh, we'll pick it up from there. <laughs> and so now... <coughs> And so now that we've got our examples folder, uh, I think it's important for me to clarify a bit like what I mean when I say an example. Uh, an example is essentially like a folder with like all the Android Studio files that it needs to then uh, go and, you know, make our apps to create those APKs and to install the app on our device. So, so those are like essentially, you know, for those of you who don't know, are folders with like a bunch of Android files that are required to have the app to work, which contain the code, which contain, uh, they don't contain the models actually, but more about that in a moment. So the examples that we're actually looking for, and there are obviously a lot of those here, right? Because all sorts of TensorFlow examples. The Android ones that we're looking for are in the light folder, then in the examples folder. And here you can see like, all of the selection of examples that are, that are available to us, right? And some of those being the object detection, the image segmentation, the image classification, gesture class classification, uh, pose estimation, uh, all that cool stuff, right? I think we can stick with object detection for the, you know, for, for example here, but the steps are pretty much gonna be the same. Uh, for all the other examples and so inside of this object detection folder this Android folder is the one that we're actually looking for and the one that we actually need to go and Open with Android studio, which contains again all of the important files So let's go ahead and do it. So now we need to essentially open Android studio and click here open an existing Android studio project uh, then navigate to wherever our project is right and just Click open. <clears throat> so here, as you can see, uh, you know, I've opened that very same uh, examples master repository, right? Navigated to light, uh, then navigated to examples, then open the object detection example or whatever example that you want, right? And then click here on the on the Android project file, essentially, to open it inside of Android Studio. So the repository that we've actually uh, downloaded from GitHub, it actually doesn't have all the models however it got the instructions for android studio to then when we open the uh, open the project folder inside of it to actually download all the models download all the, all the files that it needs and to be able to then make you know the app to run on our devices so now after you know all the making process has been uh, finalized right have, has been completed we can actually go and see for instance here in the uh, assets folder we got our we got our yep through so click make we got our detect the, that t flight model that's actually re responsible for doing object detection inside of this tensorflow light example and uh yeah so at this point right all we've done pretty much is just like open that android studio project and it'll it's automatically started to make which is like download make is like this button here that essentially make makes our project which like syncs all the lines of code downloads all the stuff that it has to download in, in order to work so uh once we've done that we're pretty much almost there to be able to run those apps on our phones however before we actually do that it's a really useful thing to make sure that we got the uh android sdk which is the software software development kit for uh, our version for for I must say better your version of Android phone. So for instance, uh, I got the Android 10 phone and the SDK pretty much came with the latest Android Studio for that version of Android. But if you have the Android 8 or like Android 7 phones, right? You just like click on uh, whatever version of Android you got. You click on that SDK, click apply, and then like download that SDK, which, which will essentially allow Android Studio to uh, debug and to make apps for for like specifically your uh, version of Android. So now that we've opened the example projects, now that we've clicked this magical hammer make button to make it and to make sure that it's downloaded everything that it needed to, 
in order to work and that we've made sure that we got the uh, correct SDK version for our version of Android here, right? We actually, we actually, you know, if you've not been, uh, if you've not been doing Android development before on your phone, there's like a huge chance you don't have uh, developer options enabled. And so let me say, can so I now let me actually say a few words about developer options. So essentially developer options are those settings for developers that use Android. So like you, like you, can just you know hook your phone up to the uh, to the USB cable and to start debugging. I mean you kind of can, but first you have to enable developer options, and those are essentially the options for developers that are that are like hidden from normal users. And so in order to get those enabled, you have to do like this weird ritual where you find where, where you like find the build number tab in your phone, for instance, like here. Here's mine. Here's mine, right? And you just like tap it like several times and it will be like telling you, you know, like if you tap it like three more times, we'll enable developer options. So it's like hidden in that way. So you find the developer, so you find it like build number tab. In my case, it was like in about front ver version in the settings of my phone. Uh, you tap on that like several times, like literally like, like tap on it, like it's weird, but that's what you gotta do if that's your first time enabling those. Right, it'll tell you, in my case, it says like the operations that required as I'm like already a developer. Uh, then, once you're there, you there there will appear another tab in the setting that you can actually go to, which is like developer options. And in my case, it was in additional settings. And there you need to go and find the USB debugging uh, kind of like tab here. And you need to check the bar that's like that thing is enabled. So once USB debugging has been enabled and the example project is also in place and everything's good at this point we can actually go and you know and like one end of the usb cable is like in my laptop and so i go and I like basically connect my phone uh via the usb cable right to to my laptop and now it's gonna ask me like uh whether i want to use it in uh and you can see it here like whether <clears throat> and so when you first connect your phone with the USB cable to the to the laptop, like it's gonna ask you whether you want to use it in the charge only mode, or whether you want to like transfer files or transfer photos. And this step, like it seems simple, like it seems like it should be like really, really simple, and there should be like one one answer. Uh, but weirdly enough, actually on this phone, I pick transfer files, and it works. But on my older phone, which I've actually used in the Open CV series, right? On my older like Android six phone. I remember it working with charge only. So what I'm saying here, it's like pick transfer files when it asks you, but if it like doesn't work, maybe try charge only and see if that helps. So hopefully, you know, this little nuance will be useful to some of you, right? So now that we've done all that, we can go actually to the run tab and here we'll find the uh, run app tab and the debug app tab, essentially a lot of apps. Anyway, so, uh, if you click run up, it'll essentially install the app on your phone and, and you'll be able to run the example example. And if you click debug app for those of you who don't know again, it'll essentially gonna do the same thing, but it'll also give you the log of what's going on in the app, which is super useful for debugging. Like if for instance you uh run it in the debug mode, if like a line of code crashes, it'll link you to, it'll link you to the uh, line of code where something went wrong. So it's like super useful in that sense. So let's click debug app, but at this stage they're kind of the same so it's gonna like start building the app on my phone right and here we can see the the log that it gives us right and so now as you can see actually uh it started like doing the Aubrey detection stuff i have no idea if it's uh, detecting you or whatever yeah i think it kind of does i think it kind of does which is cool so the app has been launched and you can pretty much follow this process with uh all of the you know with all the other example apps there which there is a lot of them and they're awesome and so a lot of a lot of thanks and props to the TensorFlow Light team for putting this stuff together so hopefully this video helps you to get started with TensorFlow Light and their awesome examples and hopefully you can build cool stuff with it right uh, really hope you enjoyed it you know smash that like button if you did enjoy it please consider subscribing if you want to see more of cool content if you want to support me, ways to do that are in the description down below. Thank you so much if you do. And again, if you 
I like the written word, written word version uh, of content, right? Please check out my blog post on weights and biases. The link is gonna be in the description. And I hope you guys are staying safe, and I hope you guys are, you know, doing great, and you have an awesome day. And uh, I'll see you next one. Bye bye.